Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In the past few tutorials, we saw how to do uh, wiring of beans inside Spring by using annotations. We used some auto wiring related annotations. We did auto wiring by name and by type. And we also used some JSR 250 annotations. Uh, all these annotations had a common requirement, which is that uh, the bean that's actually getting injected into needs to be in the Spring XML. So here in the previous tutorial, we had an at resource which injected a point object into my circle class. So whenever a circle object was getting created by Spring, a point object was added as a dependency and then uh, it was injected into this member variable through the setter. But uh, the thing is that the point object itself was defined as a bean in the Spring XML. So the circle as well was defined as a you know plain bean in the Spring XML. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at an annotation that declares a class as a bean. So we don't have to even add this uh, XML tag in the Spring XML. Even this will go, and we can have uh, all these configurations inside uh, the class itself using annotations. So. The way we do this is we need to tell Spring what classes of ours are going to be beans and what classes are not. In order to specifically tell Spring that a particular class needs to be a bean, what we need to do is we need to add an annotation called at component. Okay, so here I will import the component from org Spring framework dot stereotype. So this defines my circle class to be a spring bean. I do not give a name and the name is actually the name of the class, but of course in lower case. So what spring does is whenever it sees a class which has an at component, then what it does is this is actually equivalent to this. You know, it's actually equivalent to defining this class as a bean and then creating a name for it which is actually the name of the class itself. So this particular uh, definition of the bean inside the XML can be achieved by using this add component annotation. So since we have added the add component, let's remove this. We don't need to define, uh, we, don't, we don't need to declare the circle bean inside the Spring XML. Now here, let's look at point. Now this point is actually defined with three different names and it's defined in three different places. Now, if I add an annotation to a class, and this is actually, uh, this problem is there for all annotations. The, since the annotation is part of the class, you cannot have different instances of the beans for the same class. So what I mean by that is, if I add an annotation for the point class, now let me open up the point class, Here. Now, whatever annotation I add over here, it's going to lead to this point class behaving as one particular type of spring bean only. Now, in the spring XML, I have defined three different beans from the same point class. It's obvious that since the, you know, the annotations are going to be inside the class itself, it's not possible to have three different behaviors which result out of an annotation inside the class itself. You'd either have to have three different classes or we need to define the, you know, the metadata inside the XML itself. So actually what we are looking at is one uh, disadvantage of using annotations, or uh, you can call it an advantage of using XML. You can use the same class and then define different beans with different metadata. And uh, you can achieve that without having to write multiple classes. But then if you write annotations, you're gonna restrict all the beans of that particular class to have a same behavior. But uh, let's use this component annotation just for the circle because uh, we've seen that for the circle class, we don't have multiple beans. We just have one instance of the bean. So uh, we're going to use the add component annotation to define this circle class as a bean of name circle. So this, since we've also removed the, you know, the bean definition inside the XML, we know for sure that it's the uh, annotation that's going to get this circle class registered to spring container as a bean. 
Now we have uh, done a get bean of circle. So since this component marks this class as a bean of name circle, we should be good enough. But then there is one other thing we need to add in Spring XML. Now Spring XML needs to know that you have beans inside your uh, code that it needs to look for. So not only does it have to look for all the beans that you've defined here, it also has to look for all the beans inside your code. You know, you know, it has to look for annotations. So we need to ask Spring to scan through all our classes and then identify what annotations mark certain classes as beans. So in order to do this, what we do is we add context colon component scan. So this is the tag that tells Spring that it needs to scan for components. The components being the beans marked as at component. So there is a property that I need to enter here. This is the base package. So what I need to tell Spring is the base package in which Spring needs to scan for all the classes for the add component tag. Now, why does it not scan everything? Because you know it's it's more efficient to restrict the search to a particular uh, set of classes. And uh, it also has some other advantages. We'll have a look at that uh, down the line. But then uh, what we need to do now is we need to tell Spring what is the base package in which it needs to scan all the classes for the tags that mark certain classes as beans. So I'll use this, um, the only package that I have over here. Okay, I've given the package name and then uh, just closes the tag. Let me just close it here itself. Okay, so again, all I've done is I've told Spring that it needs to scan the code for annotations that depict certain classes as beans. And then in one of those classes, I have marked an add component, which marks this particular class as a Spring bean. So I will save this. And now we are all set. So now, because of this uh, particular tag, it's gonna scan all these classes for any annotations that mark uh, any of these classes as beans. It finds one in the circle, it sees this as a component, so it's gonna register this class as a bean, and then it's gonna give it a name called circle. And of course, it's gonna take the first letter as lowercase. So now what's gonna happen is in my uh, main method, I have a get bean of circle, and it's gonna initialize this bean, it's gonna get this bean. And then uh, of course I have a resource inside this bean, which is gonna work as earlier. So this resource is gonna look for a bean called center because this is the name here. And uh, it finds a bean with the name center. So it's gonna initialize, it's gonna do this uh, assignment and it's gonna give the bean that we want. So if we run this class now, so here you can see it's gonna get a circle bean. Uh, the init and uh, destroy are all uh, remnants of our previous coding which we did in an earlier tutorial, so don't worry about that. So the point here to note is that a circle bean has been initialized and then a point has been assigned to the bean and then we are getting that bean using a get bean. And all this is happening thanks to this annotation which marks this class as a component and then this particular tag which tells spring to scan for those components. Now this component scan tag searches for a few other annotations apart from the add component annotation. So these annotations are actually called as uh, stereotypes. So the concept of stereotypes is something like this. When you write enterprise uh, applications in spring, you would have some standard spring beans that perform some standard roles. You would have a data object you would have a service class, you would have a view, you would have a controller. So all these are uh, stereotypical roles that some uh, Spring Beans perform in, uh, in, in any enterprise application. So what Spring has done is it has some annotations that let us define a particular bean as one of those, uh, define a particular bean to do one of those roles. Now let's say, for example, that this 
actually happened to be a service uh, layer class. You know, this was actually a service implementation. Then what we could actually do is instead of at component, we could have a at service. Okay, now this at service is again from our Spring framework dot stereotype. Now if I mark this, this is gonna work as well. Even this is gonna get picked up by this component scan tag and uh, you know, if we run this, it's still going to work. It's going to register this as a bean and it's going to give it a name of circle. So nothing changes. You know, it's as if you have added a at component here, but then at service is going to give Spring additional information that this is actually a service bean. Now, if this were a data object, I could call this at repository. And then this again is a Spring framework stereotype. So this is a stereotype that tells spring that this is actually a data object. And now we have one more, which is the at controller. Now this tells that it's actually a, um, it's a controller again from a stereotype. The controller is again the uh, C of the MVC. So if you have an MVC uh, pattern implemented for your view, then uh, you can mark the controller objects as at controller and spring knows that this is actually a controller. The functioning of these tags at least initially is uh, no different from an add component, but then an add component is something generic. You know, you're just gonna tell Spring that, hey, it's a bean. But uh, if you mark it as a add service or add repository or add controller, then you're gonna tell Spring that, you know, you're, you're gonna let Spring know that something else. You're gonna let Spring know what role the bean is doing. There are many reasons why you'd wanna do that. First of all, it actually adds a level of documentation you know you look at the bean and you know what role the bean does and then there are a few other advantages as well uh, we'll look at that when we uh, when we come to aspect oriented programming but for now think of this as some extra information that you're giving to spring about what role the bean does in the whole enterprise application and then uh, it also acts as a little bit of documentation that marks the role of the bean for a human reader of the class as well.